Hi everyone, welcome back and today is the 31st of March 2021 and we are at the end of the month again so I'll be showing you my account in a while and I don't hide my losses so let us just take a look at the market right now the market is closed and there's still some off trading activity going on but generally the stock market is closed now because it is now at 9.15 p.m. So let's take a look at the ES. So this bar here is currently today, which is because this is the futures market. So they traded 24 hour. So we can see that yesterday ES has actually break a all time high. The previous all time high should be around here or here. I'm not very sure. But right now the ES yesterday has break the all time high at 3983 so that is a very bullish indication and in fact the es did not have too much of a correction last month the correction is actually on the nasdaq let's take a look at the nasdaq so the Nasdaq has a very big correction uh, in February and March. So from the high of 13,900, it dropped all the way to 12,200. And then right now it bounced off a little bit, but there's still some distance away from the high. Right now it's 13,000. 119 and the high was 13,900. So there's about seven or eight hundred point from the last high or all-time high and i certainly do hope that nasdaq will break the all-time high of course i can't predict or i can't change the market i can only hope that we will break the all-time high let's look at a few article these are not the new article it was the old article so we have the famous phase of sell in May and go away and then come back in September or October. Basically what this is saying is that traditionally or seasonally stock may go down in May and right now we are in April but this phase go along with I think from a November to April period the market is usually stronger but of course that is not true because in the last two months then the market is not strong but looking at this then you can find some comfort because if this is true sell in may then right now we are in april or end of march so beginning of april so hopefully the market will go up in april of course that we doesn't know and let's take a look at my account for yesterday so on the profit and loss per day yesterday i was up 3800 so that is in one day my account is up 3800 that is very positive or good to me and let's take a look at another two more article we have this news a couple of days ago, US start implementing law that risks Chinese stock delisting from New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ. This is not a good news for Chinese stock because Chinese stock is always in a very political situation. And right now, if you look at my account, I have two Chinese stock. One is Alibaba. But Alibaba, I only have 10 shares, so I wasn't too worried on this. And I probably would find a chance to get out of Alibaba and I will not be trading Chinese stock for a while. And the other stock that I have was actually new. I'm actually very bullish on new, but because of all this political issue that's going on between US and China, so I will try to get out of the new by this year of course i don't mean to get out of new 
within the next one or two weeks. I will find a chance to get out of Neil before the end of the year and hopefully Neil will go up above my average price. I have 200 shares so my average price is about 51.50. I hope that Neil can go back up to 60. Of course, we won't know about this. Let's take a look at another article. This is what Biden say. Biden say that China want to become the most wealthy, powerful country, but it's not going to happen on my watch. All along, I mean, all this while, my thinking was that US will be the most richest and powerful country for the next 20 years. But after reading this article, I think that China is ramping up very fast and US is actually very afraid of the China. My prediction was 20 years, but Biden only predict for the next four to eight years if he's re-elected for the next election, then he'll have an eight year term. But I think US is trying very hard not to let China overtake the US. But of course, that doesn't mean that China is going to slow down. China has been coming up very fast for the last 20 years. If you look at China in the 1980s and 1990s, what is China? They don't have anything except they have a lot of people. But today, China is rich and they are the number two after US. They are the second richest country in the world. Personally, I do hope that US will remain strong and US will remain the top number one. I certainly do not hope that China will be the richest or most powerful country. But we have to see and I certainly will still continue to invest in US, US market. So back to my account, let's take a look. So I'm up 3,800 yesterday. That's very great news. But let's look at the profit and loss open. I'm actually down $11,120. So is this figure correct? This figure is actually correct. If you take a look at some of the big losses, Tesla, I'm losing 1,600 because I actually buy Tesla at about 630. I enter into Tesla and then 660 and 857, 844. So my average price on Tesla is 743. So I did loss about 1006 on Tesla. And then if you look at other stock like Apple, because I sell a put, then I'm being assigned at 136. And right now Apple has dropped to 122. So on this Apple alone, I lose about 1003. So this figure here is pretty accurate but of course this figure do not take into the account that those option that expire or the premium that I have collected because some of the core option has expired worthless and then some of the put even though I'm assigned but the premium is into my account so this figure here do not take that into account it only show the current profit and loss open on all these positions. I have about 20 stock here. So this figure is accurate. So let's take a look at my account. So right now my account is 64,385. And let me just update this quickly. So this is the updated figure. So this month, I'm down about 3,200. On the whole profit and loss year to date, 
I'm probably up about 1% or there about. If we look at here overall profit and loss here to date, then I'm up about 591 or just about 1%. Because I started the account this year at 63,996 and you can actually go back to watch the video. Because on this day, 3rd of January, I posted that my account was at 63,996. And then this is the end of January video that I show my account. And then this is the end of February video that I show that I have a loss. And right now it's on the third month. Right now it's March 2021. So this is the updated part. So I will continue to update you as we progress along for this year into April, May, June all the way until December. So am I happy about this? Or do I feel good about this? Of course not. Nobody likes to see a loss, but I think this is part and parcel of trading. And I think I'm still manageable on my losses. If you take a look at here, I have a open loss of 11,000. Why didn't my account drop 11,000? Okay, personally, I don't really trade stock. That means I don't buy a stock and sell a stock. I'm not a stock trading guy. And if you take a look at the account statement here, then you can see the profit and loss year to date. So these are the, all the symbols that I traded. And these are the profit and loss. And we have this here, yeah, Tesla. So Tesla is down about 2008 for the year to date. And then I have all the other stock that is down, new, but other stock is up. So why didn't my account show 11,000 loss? That is because I collected a lot of premium. And all this premium add up to my account that is not reflected here always remember that this figure is just showing you the open and lost profit for all the counter that is currently open but it don't show you the previous which means to say all the call premium or all the put premium that i have collected that expire is all into my account and not reflected in this figure here that explain why my account did not drop 11,000 even though I have a 11,000 loss here but my account did not drop 11,000 so I think it's still pretty manageable and for this week I did not do a lot of trade I did close out my SPY calendar for a little bit of loss and basically I'm assigned on American Airlines I'm assigned on 24 and if you look at the call that I'm selling, I'm selling a 27 call. I don't usually sell a call that is below my purchase price. Even if you take a look at Apple, Apple is right now at 122. The call that I sell is 135, just $1 below the purchase price. But there's all the previous premium that I have collected that is not reflected here. I don't like to sell call that is below this price. So even though I can only collect very little premium, but I would want it to sell higher than that. And if you take a look at Blink, my assigned price on Blink is 39. Right now, Blink is as 41.50 and I have a 47 call that going to expire on the 1st of April, that is tomorrow. And if this were to expire, and most likely it will expire, so coming next Monday, would I be selling a call that is 39? I won't. I want to sell a call that is much higher. 
Then the rule of thumb is always to go for 1% premium when you are looking to sell a call and that is higher than your strike. But in the case of some of the other stock like Apple or even AMD, I couldn't get a 1% so I just have to sacrifice and get lesser premium on that. And then if you look at the FUBO, I added another 100 share on FUBO because basically I'm bullish on FUBO. So I added 100 more share on FUBO on the 29th of March at 22.17. So my average price on FUBO for the 200 share is about 28. And basically I forget to sell one more call, but that's okay because the current call is going to expire on the 1st of April. So maybe next Monday, then I'll look to sell two call for the 200 share. I always like to sell call against my share so that I can collect all the premium. So even though here is showing a big loss, but all the premium that I get will expire and I get to keep the premium and that will help to push up the account. If I've done nothing on it, if I just hold on to all the share, then yes, my account will probably drop 11,000 because that is the open loss. Then I will have a 11,000 loss. But because all this while, January, February and March, I have been selling call and put premium and that premium all go into my account. That is why I do not have a 11,000 loss. So it is very important to sell call on your stock. Don't let it either. So the only stock that I did not sell a call on is probably Fiscar, FSR. My purchase price was $14.85. Right now it's $17.50 because the call premium is really very little. So I will see what to do with it because Fiscar did have a run up some time back and when it run up then the call premium will be rich then I will consider to sell some premium on the Fiscar but for now I think I will just leave that alone so that's pretty much the update for today and I don't have a lot of new position in fact i did not open a lot of new position this two weeks but if you look at my option buying power then i still have twenty seven thousand to play with but i don't want to be over trading so i will just wait and see and look for some opportunity ideally i wanted some of the option to expire and then i can continue to sell call or sell put I will still keep making video and my main strategy is still the option wheel so I will still be selling put and selling call on all this stock so thank you for your patience for watching the whole video and staying with me this video is a little bit long because there's a few things that I want to cover and if you like the video please subscribe to the channel and share the video that will help me to make more video in the future. Thank you.